There is a viral Substack article from a very prominent data influencer out there going around. It is claiming that slowly changing dimensions, specifically SCD type 2, are harmful and outdated. The advice they give is stop using SCD2, take a daily snapshot of your data. It's easier, cheaper, and faster. Here is the thing. If you work at Netflix or Meta where this influencer comes from, he's absolutely right. But if you work in finance, healthcare, insurance, or operations like 90% of us do, and you follow this advice, you aren't modernizing your stack. You're building a system that can't survive a legal audit. Today, we're going to talk about the difference between big tech architecture and enterprise reality. And I'm going to show you why snapshot everything is a liability trap for the rest of us. The argument provided for killing SCD2 is simple. Storage is cheap. Instead of tracking changes row by row, save the full copy of the table every night with your date stamp. If you need to know how many followers user X had last month, you query the partition. If your job is to calculate retention, snapshots are the correct tool, but retention is a derivative metric. It is not the state of record. Here is the reality. The snapshot approach assumes that the data at 2 a.m. when your batch runs is the only state that matters. It treats inner days changes as noise. In my world, that volatility isn't noise. It's where the reality lives. Well, let me give you two real world scenarios from Salesforce that I've personally had to handle recently. Here's scenario one. 10 a.m. sales rep comes in. They go into Salesforce, create an opportunity for $10,000. At noon, they realize that they're going to be short of their quota for the month and they inflate that value to $500,000 and market it closed one. Then at four o'clock, the RVP catches that this inflation has occurred. They go back to the sales rep, let them know that they found it, and the sales rep panics. But for 30, that rep goes in and edits the deal back to zero dollars and marks it as closed lost. At 2 a.m., your pipeline's going to run. It takes a snapshot. If you're following that snapshot daily everything method, your report's going to show the deal was zero dollars. You have zero record of that $500,000 opportunity, and the sales RVP is upset that he doesn't have the reporting to show HR so that he could start the disciplinary action for this particular rep. But the senior engineer who used SCD2 and is batching every so often or using CDF to track all the changes, you have three rows, and you can reconstruct that whole crime scene. Here's scenario two. I call this one the fat finger. 9.30 a.m., sales rep comes in, updates a $50,000 deal to 80 grand. At 10 a.m., they accidentally update the wrong record because they're on a call with another potential client. And they overwrite that 80 grand deal with $25,000. At 2 o'clock, they realize that they can't find that big $80,000 deal that they had from this morning. But they decide, I'm going to wait till tomorrow for my reports to come in, and I'll take a look then. 2 a.m., your snapshot ran. And the next morning, that rep blames you for bad data because you only have snapshots. You can't prove that that change occurred and where that $80,000 deal was. You lost the company $55,000 of opportunity and your data team's reputation. The business value isn't the final number. The business value is that audit trail. Here's the hidden cost. The second argument for snapshots is that storage is cheap. This is true if you're a startup with 50 gigs of data. It's a lie if you're an enterprise with 500 terabytes and you have auditors coming in to audit you for things like SOC 2, HIPAA, or even Sarbanes-Oxley. Here's my analogy about that wasted space. You don't go out and buy a second loaf of bread because you have the counter space to hold it. It's still a waste. It still molds before you end up eating it. If you don't need data, don't store the data. Let's take a look at the actual math. You have 100 million users. Only 1% change their profile daily. The snapshot approach, you're writing 100 million rows every night. 99% of that is duplicated and it's waste. The SCD type 2 approach, 
you're only writing a million rows because that's all that changed. Over a year, the snapshot approach writes 36.5 billion records. The SCD2 approach writes 1.3 billion records. When your CFO asks why that Snowflake or Databricks bill doubled, telling them the SCD2 logic was too complex for me to write is not the acceptable answer. In addition to storing all of this extra data, while you may have the best of intentions for making sure your partitioning is great and perfect, you're also inevitably going to increase some of your compute cost, contributing to that higher Snowflake or Databricks bill. The critics say, but Chris, writing merge statements is error prone. Handling out of order data, absolutely a nightmare. That may have been true back in 2020. Today, if you're manually writing merge statements to manage your history, you're working harder, not smarter. If you're in Databricks using Delta Live tables, or they are called Lake Flow declarative pipelines, then SCD type two isn't complex logic problems anymore. It is a switch in your code that you're writing for your DLT. Here's what that looks like. As you see here, we're defining the stored as SCD type as two. No complex merge logic, nothing difficult here, super simple and straightforward. That's it. Databricks handles the rest of the logic for you. The closing of records, the out of order updates, the state of the management. The argument that SCD2 is too hard isn't a technical constraint. In addition, if you're using Lakeflow connectors, there is an option to turn history on and it will automatically ingest your data into your bronze layer as SCD2. Super simple, all of the logics being handled behind the scenes by Databricks and is cost effective as well. Here's the time machine issue. Think about the DeLorean. You wanna go back in time, see what happened a week ago. The author of this article says that reconstructing the history is impossible because you have to stitch together old files. Not if you're using CDF, change data feed. Instead of stitching together 300 daily snapshots to find out what happened last year, you ask the table for its history. That looks something like this. As you see, with the change data feed, you can get the change type, the commit timestamp, and the values. You have a complete forensic audit trail of every insert, update, and delete that ever happened into that table. Try doing that with a folder full of 365 daily parquet snapshots. You can't. Here is the production grade standard. It's a hybrid architecture. One, the immutable log. This you keep in your bronze layer. Capture every change via CDC or CDF. Number two, the SCD layer. This is your silver layer tables. You build an SCD type two table using DLT and this is your audit vault. This is what protects you and your company from fines and other types of litigation or regulatory issues. Then you have your snapshot view, your gold layer. Don't materialize a snapshot table. Create a view that simulates it. This gives your analyst their easy snapshot queries things like where date stamp equals XYZ, but keeps your auditors happy and your storage bill low. When a hiring manager asks you about data modeling, they aren't testing your syntax. They're testing your logic and your judgment. The junior answer comes in and says, snapshots are easier to write and they're cost effective because storage is cheap. The senior answer, however, is that snapshots are convenient, but I use SCD2 for the underlying storage to ensure auditability and manage costs at scale. Stop optimizing for easy code. Start optimizing for keeping your job and your business safe.